Welcome to the I Dream of Speaking podcast. I am your host, Ramona J. Smith, 2018 World Champion of Public Speaking, and I am here to help you find your voice so that you can shine brighter, dream bigger, and speak louder. The I Dream of Speaking podcast is all about mastering the art of public speaking, sharing our dreams and aspirations as speakers, and living confidently so that we feel good both on and off the stage. On today's episode, I'll be discussing how to create a strong message that adds value without adding unessential words. This episode is Talk Less say more. Talk less and say more. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the next episode. We drop every single Sunday. Also, give this video a thumbs up. Drop a comment with your tips, suggestions, and love. Share this. If you know someone in your circle who wants to become a better speaker, share this podcast with them. Follow me on Instagram at Ramona J. Smith 1. Facebook and LinkedIn are both Ramona J. Smith. Join our community on Facebook, Speakers United, and visit my website, RamonaJSmith.com. You can also send me an email if you want to connect. My email is I speak at RamonaJSmith.com. It's been a while since I've been in college, but I remember having a last minute, well, I didn't have a last minute report. I waited until the last minute to complete an essay or to complete a report or to complete some type of project. Or if you ever had an English exam or test and you had to do those long answers, they had to be at least a couple of paragraphs. If you ever remember waiting to the last minute or trying to basically BS your way <laughs> To that specific word count or if it had to be four pages and you're kind of running out of words i have done that so many times that is when you just throw any type of words in there they don't even really have to make sense they're going to be repetitive and redundant and words that you don't even need to use but you're just trying to fill in that space you're trying to force the answers I once had a teacher who actually didn't even count the smaller words. She didn't count it. She didn't count the, for, and the small words like that. So you could not cheat and say your essay is 500 words, but all you did was use a bunch of its, ands, buts, and fors. <laughs> Here's an example. Say you have to answer a question, what does public speaking mean to you? And you have to, you have, to have four sentences. You can't answer it like my son answers when I ask him, has he had a, how was his day? And he's good. Good. How was your day, Ryan? Good. Mm -mm. The answer to this question has to be four sentences. What does public speaking mean to you? One of those BS answers would be public speaking is when you speak in public. Speaking in public is much different than speaking in private because you have to speak in front of people you don't know. If you don't know the people, you will not want to speak to them in public. Public speaking to me means that you speak to a group publicly. <laughs> I couldn't even get through that <laughs> because if you know, you know. If you had to, to, to get that assignment done the night before or even the morning of class, or you are just trying to get that last sentence out to answer these questions on these exams, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You are just repeating words and trying to say the same thing in a different way. Public speaking to me means that you speak to a group publicly. <laughs> so funny. That is so funny to me, but you basically said a whole lot of nothing. That is what we're going to address in this week's episode. Talk less, say more. Before we move on, today's video is sponsored by Lakesia Brent. She is an entrepreneur and financial freedom specialist in the Houston, Texas area. Her team is expanding and she is seeking focused, teachable, and ambitious men and women who are ready to gain financial freedom. If you are coachable, love to travel, 
and have a passion for helping others, this is an opportunity for you to earn extra income at your own pace from anywhere in the world. Lakesia and her team of experts will show you how to unlock the key to success and time freedom. Call 281-704-1181 to book a discovery call. That's 281-704-1181. Thank you, Lakesia, for sponsoring this video. And if you would like to sponsor a future episode, please email me at ispeak at ramonajsmith.com. Let's get back into it. There is a difference between talking and speaking. I will repeat myself for those in the back who didn't hear me. There is a difference between talking and speaking. In general, talking and speaking are used interchangeably to refer to the act of communicating using words. However, there can be a subtle difference in their usage. Talking typically implies a more casual and informal form of communication. It often involves engaging in a conversation or exchanging ideas with others in a relaxed manner. For example, when friends talk about their day or discuss a topic and they're just talking to each other. On the other hand, speaking, speaking tends to have a more formal connotation. It refers to delivering a speech, presentation, presenting information, or expressing oneself in a structured manner. For instance, when someone gives a presentation at work or delivers a public address, they are speaking to an audience. While the distinction between talking and speaking can vary depending on the context, it generally relates to the level of formality and structure in communication. Many people who are interested in public speaking are excellent talkers. They can get in front of a crowd, they can talk about anything, Many people who come to me and they want to improve their public speaking skills, I can talk, I can talk for hours. I can talk about anything for hours. Exactly. You can talk about anything for hours, but what can you speak about? When someone is talking, she tends to go all over the place. She tends to speak about, not speak, she tends to talk about one subject here and then go to another subject and she's bouncing around and nobody can really follow what she's saying because her thoughts are not organized. She's all over the place with her words and her thoughts. Also, talking is often very self-centered. Why? Because who do most of us love talking about on a regular basis? Who could we talk about all day long? Ourselves. Talking can lead to someone rambling on and on and on. And it's usually off the cuff and it's freestyle. Whereas speaking is organized. Speeches are written. Speeches are rehearsed. They should be. Speeches should be rehearsed unless it is an, un it is an unexpected or extemporaneous request. If someone just randomly asks you to get up and speak or say a few words, of course you can't practice. Otherwise, we should be rehearsing our speeches. A speech adds value to the audience. Ramona, what does it mean to add value? What does that even mean? Adding value to a speech, that's a whole nother episode, by the way, we'll, we'll get there, but it simply means that you are tuned in to the audience's favorite radio station. What is the audience's favorite radio station? No, it's not 97.9 The Box. <laughs> it is W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? What are the key takeaways? What new information are you sharing with the audience? How will their lives change after hearing you speak? How? What, what's the transformation? What am I getting out of hearing you speak? Talking is more of a habit. Speaking is an art. The art of public speaking. Here are five ways to talk less and say more. Number one. Remove unnecessary words. Identify any words or phrases that don't add meaning to your sentences and eliminate them. For example, instead of saying, 
I am going to go to the store. <laughs> you can simply say, I will go to the store. Number two, avoid redundancy. Avoid redundancy. Be mindful of repeating information unnecessarily. Trim down your sentences by removing redundant phrases. For instance, instead of saying, she nodded her head in agreement, you can say, she nodded in agreement. We all understand that. It's simple. Number three, use active voice. Opt for active voice instead of passive voice to make your sentences more direct and concise. For example, instead of saying, the book was read by me, you can say, I read the book. Do you see how that's more concise and, and brief and simple? Number four, break down complex ideas. If you have a long and complex sentence, consider breaking it down into smaller, more straightforward sentences. This helps to convey your message more clearly and concisely. And finally, number five, be mindful of word choice. Choose words that are precise and convey your intended meaning without unnecessary elaboration. Avoid using overly complex or technical terms when simpler words will suffice. Practicing brevity takes time and effort, and by being mindful of unnecessary words, redundancy, and sentence structure, you can gradually develop the skill of using more concise sentences. Number one, remove unnecessary words. Number two, avoid redundancy. Number three, use active voice. Number four, break down complex ideas. And number five, be mindful of your word choice. These are ways to talk less and say more. Let's talk about word choice for a, for a little bit. Improving your word choice can help you talk less and say more as well. Refining your word choice can greatly enhance your communication skills. I'm gonna give you a few tips to help you improve your word choice. Number one, expand your vocabulary. That way you don't keep using the same words over and over. How do you expand your vocabulary? Read, 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 read. <laughs> read more books. <laughs> Read extensively and expose yourself to a wide range of literature, articles, and other written materials. Pay attention to the new words and their usage. Use a dictionary, use Mama Google, use Siri, or a vocabulary building app to learn and understand unfamiliar words. Don't be the person who acts like you understand a word, but you don't. We have too many devices around us to help us figure out the definition of words. If someone says a word that you do not understand, look it up, know the definition, and then you start to use it. Number two, understand context. Consider the context in which you are communicating. Different situations may require different levels of formality or specific terminology. Tailor your word choice accordingly to ensure clarity and effectiveness. Who are you talking to? Who is your audience? If your audience is a group of 12th graders, we don't want to use a lot of terms that are in jargon that they won't understand. So understand who you're speaking to and how you can use words to relate to the young, the, not just the young people, but whomever you are speaking to. I was just having this conversation with my son the other night because I, I want to get more involved with the young people. I want to get more involved with the youth. I've been a little disconnected from the 16 to 22 age range of, of young adults coming up because I'm not in the classroom like I used to be. And I was asking him, I said, son, what are, what are some, of the, some of the words the young kids and little whippersnappers <laughs> are using these days? And he said, well, mom, we, we, we use a word called riz. In the world is riz but he was he was explaining that riz is like gang so the next time I go and speak to a group of high schoolers I'm gonna use the term riz they may laugh at me but I'm using a term that they understand and they probably thought I would not even know anything about it so know who you're talking to and tailor your word choice accordingly to ensure clarity and effectiveness number three use precise and specific language 
instead of using vague or general terms, strive to be more specific and precise in your choice of words. This helps to convey your message accurately and avoids ambiguity. For example, instead of saying, I like food, <laughs> you can say, I enjoy Italian cuisine. Number four, consider connotations. Be aware of the connotations associated with different words. Some words may have positive or negative associations that can impact how your message is received. Choose words that align with the tone and intention of your communication. Next, practice active reading and writing. Actively engage with written materials by highlighting or noting down words that stand out to you. Practice incorporating these words into your own writing and speaking to reinforce your understanding and usage. And finally, seek feedback. Ask for feedback from others such as friends, colleagues, or mentors on your word choice. They can provide valuable insights and suggestions for improvement. Six ways to, six ways to improve your word choice, expand your vocabulary, understand context, use precise and specific language, consider connotations, practice active reading and writing, and finally seek feedback. Improving word choice is an ongoing process. By actively working on expanding your vocabulary, being mindful of context and seeking feedback, you can gradually enhance your word selection skills and become a more effective communicator. I was reading something by Jim Kim Blank. Jim Kim Blank suggests trying to dump what she calls wazzle words. <laughs> what is a wazzle word? A wazzle word is waffling and fuzzy words. These are words like absolutely, actually, aspects, basically, definitely, entirely, extremely, literally, overall, perfectly, quite, really situation, <laughs> truly, ultimately, virtually, and very. Could, should, and would are also sometimes wazzlers. <laughs> she suggests trying to dump those wazzle words. Those could be considered filler words as well. I myself often use absolutely a lot. I use the word absolutely a lot. I use the word really, definitely, <laughs> I use those wazzle words and I have to work on avoiding them and I have to work on dumping them because just, just because we use those words, it doesn't make us sound smarter. It doesn't make us sound like we know what we're talking about. It's just extra words. It is not allowing us to talk less and say more. You don't have to use more words to sound more polished or intellectual. You do not have to use more words to sound more polished or intellectual. Shakespeare said it like this. <clears throat> Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness, the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief and sing. <laughs> that was from Shakespeare's Hamlet. That's my Shakespeare voice. I don't know. I've never met the man. I don't know how he sound, how he sounded, or how he would have wanted to it would have wanted it to sound. But that's my interpretation of Shakespeare. Keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it brief. Keep it concise. Use those delicious words that describe exactly what you want to say instead of going all around several extra words that are unessential to prove your point or to make your point or to create a message. Y'all know what time it is. What that mouth do? What that, what that mouth do? Hey, what that mouth do? What that, what that mouth do? As speakers, our most important tool is our voice. It's your money maker. It's your everything. And sometimes we take it for granted. Since we aren't singers or voiceover artists, most speakers tend to neglect 
properly caring for the voice. Every week, we will discuss one new health tip to keep your mouth and voice healthy. What that mouth do? <laughs> this week's WDMD tip comes from a vocal actress, seasoned radio personality, and audio engineer. She is one of my good, good friends. Her name is Adriana Thomas. Adriana says, when you are experiencing issues with your voice or your throat, you need to avoid eating meats, sugar, and dairy. You need to avoid those foods because they create mucus, which can further irritate the throat. Instead of eating those foods, you can try stews, soups, vegetables, and fruit with a high water content like watermelon and cucumbers. Let's argue. Some people don't think cucumbers are a fruit. Let's argue. Anywho, she also says keep throat lozenges and chloroseptic spray on hand. She also gives a quick remedy to remove mucus. You can drink some lemon lime soda or some ginger beer. Say, for instance, your voice is irritated, but you're about to go on stage or you're about to speak. Take some lemon lime soda, a little bit of lemon lime soda or some ginger beer, and it should help remove a little bit of that mucus. She also recommends doing vocal warm-ups before you speak. I completely agree. She recommends something simple, something easy, the A-E-I-O-U warm-up. Just saying A-E-I-O-U, singing it, saying it lower. For example, A-E-I-O-U. Lastly, Adriana recommends speaking when your voice is at its most rich and robust state. That is usually earlier in the day when you have not done too much speaking and your body has awakened to the day. That is this week's WDMD tip. Thank you all so much for listening. On next week's episode, we are going to talk about storytelling. It's going to be all about how to become a better storyteller. Make sure you meet me right here, same time next week. You do not want to miss it. Great speakers are great storytellers. Be sure to share this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Also, send me your What That Mouth Do tips for oral health and voice care, oral health and voice care. Follow me on Instagram at Ramona J. Smith one. Visit my website, RamonaJSmith.com. Stay connected. Join our Speakers United group on Facebook and make sure you subscribe right now if you haven't already. Click it. Click it. <laughs> I would love to come speak to your organizations, your clubs, your groups, your employees, your team members. You can email me at ispeak at ramonajsmith.com for booking information. It is always a pleasure to share this time with you. I spoke at a DEI event earlier about the challenges of women in the workplace. It was phenomenal. It is Black History Month. I would love to come and speak to your kiddos, to your students, to your colleagues about the importance of Black excellence. Next month is Women's History Month. I would love to come and speak to your groups of women and empower them and inspire them to continue being at their best. We also have the Crafting Your Keynote Workshop. It's a virtual workshop coming up on February 21st. Go to the website RamonaJSmith.com and register there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys' support so very much. And until next time, let me help you find your voice so we can dream bigger, shine brighter, and speak louder. I hope to see you right here next week on the I Dream of Speaking podcast.